Wano mubia pa ebi abu gande miaka lunana Mubia pa ebi manyidua Tuwaba anga oon tisa wano mbu gande Angie tisa ili wolu aliru Eyo kuwa mbaba naba Tima guangeze nemira o siva kukubo Mbira o paka paka Ni uba kuwa masasi nze siva o You have been killing, you are now going to die. Your only way is to surrender. Even this looking for you, looking for you, looking for you, because in the looking we may get you and you don't get out. But if you surrender for us, we never keep you. Museveni, the government ya mwe, ne bitongo libyo kwenda, mwe kira uko ne dini ya katonde ya waisila, mga mwe jifure ya katutu. Habari ya nare mwabari mwitungu, mwa mwe varunda, mga bakuta mburi rako. Amampati, mbolida, mkwe sawo, Okwe ulire sajja No kwe roza kwa kuteke kukuru vedera Siye mbunje tumonda Wabula echekuru Mekujawo Museveni Tutere is a democracy ya The social media apparently has been saying that Museveni is dead Mati ya wakamba gati yukande ya chukiku Museveni Ah wani ya kukamba ya jitende kawo Ya sanga o, ishi sanga. Eila jaji jira ki, aja jira kau. Mr. President, invited guests, honorable colleagues from NUP, from FDC, UPC, DP, JEMA, PPP, and Independents, the director and staff of the Office of the Leader of the Opposition, members of the press, ladies and gentlemen, a very good morning and a warm welcome. Before I go further, I just want to ensure we have a learned of the news, or at least to reiterate the same. Um, one of our comrades in the struggle, Sarah Eperu, who's been uh, part of the Forum for Democratic Change and has been part of the leadership for a while and an activist, passed on. We learned of uh, this very unfortunate incident. I'd like to request us colleagues to stand for a minute so we can observe a moment of silence of uh, Sarah Epero. May her soul rest in time, please. Ladies and gentlemen, as we undertake the process of preparing the budget for the financial year 2024-2025, we're deeply humbled by the profound trust by the people of Uganda. Their confidence in our abilities as their elected representatives is not just a privilege, but also a solemn responsibility. We understand the weight of this trust that has been bestowed upon us by the people of Uganda and it ought to serve as the guiding force propelling us forward in our unwavering commitment to ensure efficient service delivery by the government to the citizenry, accountability, and our steadfast stance against corruption and misuse of taxpayers' money. Honorable colleagues and esteemed guests, corruption remains a pervasive and insidious problem that undermines the fabric of our society. It erodes public trust in government institutions. It diverts resources away from essential services and perpetuates inequality and injustice. As leaders, it is our duty to confront corruption head on 
and ensure that public resources are used for the benefit of all, not for the enrichment of a few. Ladies and gentlemen, on an annual basis we lose over 10 trillion shillings to corruption, according to figures from the Inspectorate of Government. Think about how many hospitals this money could build and equip, roads, schools, or other critical service delivery areas. There's no way this country's resource envelope will benefit the state for as long as a huge portion of this money is lost to thieves at different levels in government. It is no wonder that government is proposing to increase taxes on certain commodities and services, which are going to further burden the population that is already not seeing adequate service delivery for the tax money that they pay currently. We need to save this money that is stolen by the thieves. That way we don't have to dig deeper into the pockets of the struggling citizenry. As we speak, ladies and gentlemen, traders downtown are fighting against high taxes. Their businesses are crumbling. They borrow money to start businesses and they struggle every step of the way. And government is tightening the loose around them. We need to listen and respond to the cries of the citizens of Uganda. And we want to join the traders and all other Ugandans that are saying it's not right for us to put a chokehold on the citizenry and yet they struggle to see service delivery at the end of the day. And yet, they see this money that they give in taxes being stolen. And that's why the traders are saying no. And we want to encourage them, as citizens of this country, to speak out. And so, we do support their peaceful demonstration to say, this is wrong, enough is enough. Ladies and gentlemen, in line with our mandate of keeping the government in check, we pledge to relentlessly expose this corruption in whichever government entity it exists, and regardless of who is involved in this corruption. The opposition has chosen an approach to resource allocation that places human rights at its very core. We believe that access to basic necessities such as clean water, healthcare, education, housing, shelter, and social protection is not a luxury, but an inalienable right bestowed upon every citizen of Uganda. By prioritizing the allocation of resources towards these fundamental needs, we not only empower communities to withstand the trials they face, but also reaffirm our dedication to upholding the dignity of each and every Ugandan citizen. A review of the government's budgeting process has consistently uncovered apparent misappropriation and misallocation of resources, notably through program-based budgeting. This has reaffirmed our determination to prepare the opposition budget for the fiscal year 2024-2025. This budget is more than simply a financial plan. It illustrates our commitment to strengthening communities through effective service delivery. As your proposition, we don't simply oppose. We offer alternatives. And that's what we are doing today. That's what we are here for today. Even though these are alternatives that are ignored most times. But at least we get to paint a picture to Ugandans of what ought to be done. We are telling Ugandans, if we were the ones in power currently, this is what we would do. This is how we would allocate the resource envelope. And that's important. Because they want to see leadership. They want to see people that have a vision for the country. That's what we are doing today. I'm sure you hear many times people who will say, those opposition people, they simply oppose. No. It's not just opposing for the sake of it. We are showing Ugandans this is the direction we ought to take. And we'll keep doing that. So that we show them that we are a serious government in waiting. Honorable colleagues and esteemed guests, the human rights based approach that we have adopted forms the foundation of our alternative budget, demonstrating our consistent commitment to defending the basic freedoms and rights of every Ugandan citizen. We hope that by adopting this approach, 
the budgeting process will become an effective instrument for social justice and equitable development. Therefore, in order to ensure that no one is left behind, it is imperative that government allocates resources in a manner that promotes accountability and transparency. That's something that we are pushing for and will keep pushing and will not stop. There are voices that might try to silence us, but it's our duty to make sure that government is accountable, to make sure that every penny of tax money that is paid by Ugandan citizens is put to proper use. Honorable colleagues, at the heart of our responsibilities as elected representatives to hold the government accountable and ensure that the allocation and utilization of resources are in alignment with the genuine needs and aspirations of the citizenry. We've got to prioritize. Sometimes it looks like government has got its priorities the wrong side up in the way they allocate resources. We want to show them the priority areas that we need to focus on. That healthcare is important. That education is important. If we want to secure the future of Ugandans, we must begin with the young people today who are in school. Just look at the pennies that are allocated to UPE. And you see how there is no prioritization. How do you secure the future of young people who are studying under trees? Who have one teacher teaching all subjects in a class? Young people who are writing on the floor and we think we are securing their future. No, we are not. We are robbing their future. How do you tell young mothers who are giving birth on the floor in hospitals across the country, including here in the city center? See the congestion in hospitals? People go to hospital and there's no doctor to attend to them. Where the doctor is present, they don't have equipment to use. And you tell those people, those young mothers that are secure in their future, no, you're not. We are robbing their future. And we must talk about these issues. We must bring them to the fore as a position and say, these must be taken care of. Government pride itself in focusing on infrastructure. Is that true? I don't think so. Of recent, you saw the outcry about the situation of roads here in Kampala, the heart of the country, the face of the country, which generates over 60% of our country's budget. And it is dead. It's not okay. And so we must speak out, we must give direction, and we must rally the people of Uganda to join this cause. This cause, ladies and gentlemen, is not just for us, the elected leaders. Of course, we must lead. And that's why the people of Uganda entrusted you and I to lead them, to speak for them, to be their voice. And as we do that, we should rally them to say, please join us in this cause. And I want to appreciate the people of Uganda because they are waking up and smelling the coffee. As the you traders are demonstrating as we speak. Because they are saying, no, we must speak out. So that's important. As we speak, all the English you can in the front parliament, then we shall speak that English. We must rally the people of Uganda to say, all of us should be able to speak out. Because no one is safe in a sinking boat. So it is our duty, all of us, as the people of Uganda, to see that we bring to an end this entire mess that we grapple with as a country. This duty goes beyond mere oversight. It is essential for me the principles of good governance and ensuring that every Ugandan benefits equitably from the wealth of our nation. Our duty to keep the government in check is not simply a matter of political rivalry. It is a fundamental aspect of our democratic system, ladies and gentlemen. It is through oversight and scrutiny that we ensure that power is exercised responsibly and that the voices of the marginalized people are heard and represented. As we engage in this process of budgetary deliberations, let us remain steadfast in our commitment to upholding the principles of good governance. Let us ensure that every shilling of public funds is utilized effectively and efficiently to address the pressing needs of our nation. And let us never forget that our duty is not just to our constituents, but to the collective well-being 
of all Ugandans. And that's why we are national leaders. The people of Nakawa West sent me to Parliament. But I don't represent just the people of Nakawa West. The laws that we pass, the issues we deliberate will affect everybody. And it's important that the viewers are that way. So that the people of Uganda see themselves in us, they hear their voice in our voices. Ladies and gentlemen, as we present our alternative budget to the nation, we reaffirm our commitment to fulfilling our oversight function on budget performance. We shall continue to hold the government accountable and ensure transparency in the allocation and utilization of resources. All in service of the people of Uganda. I would like to extend my deepest gratitude to the members of the Shadow Cabinet and the dedicated staff of the Office of the Leader of the Opposition for their tireless efforts in drafting this alternative budget. There are challenges, and we will continue to grapple with challenges. The staff has shrinked, we have fewer people, but they are dedicated, and, and we keep moving because we have got work to do. The people of Uganda don't expect excuses from us. They expect us to deliver on our mandate. The expertise of this team, Shadow Cabinet and the staff that we do have and their commitment have been indispensable in shaping our vision for a more just and resilient Uganda. I'd like to appreciate you all for making the time to be here today. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for God and my time. Um, as I do it, um, we invite my leader, uh, Brand, to take note uh, that I'm very last today from civil society. Civil society plays a very beautiful role, and it's important that we all to join in hands. As I've said, the people we are involved in to see a better country is for all of us, it is for leaders, it is for civil society. It is for ordinary folks out there, it is for the traders, it is for the ordinary people, everybody. And so we do appreciate you. I will be taking notes of uh, each one by name. Um, our shadow minister for information at some point will take note of each one of them, but we do appreciate you for coming. Um, ladies and gentlemen, do allow me to invite uh, our OB, He's not only a leader, but uh, he's an OB in this city, as we were walking down the stairs, he was missing about his time in this city, especially during the project one call, talking a lot about that. Um, he he will be with us um, entirely after grabbing from an engagement he was at, and so shortly after his remarks, he'll be going back to that engagement, but I'm glad he could make time. Ladies and gentlemen, the honorable Chakuna Nisei Kamu, welcome. welcome. My check one too. <laughs> uh, the right honorable leader of our parliamentary front, uh, honorable members of parliament, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, allow me also add my voice to send heartfelt condolences to friends, families, and comrades of Sarah Epego, and I continue to pray that the Almighty rest a gentle soul in eternal peace. It is an honor today for me to share my thoughts with you this morning as we launch uh, our alternative budget policies for the new financial year. The theme for today is a reflection of our vision for a new Uganda, a Uganda whose resources are exploited for the benefit of the citizens and not for the benefit of a select few individuals. A Uganda that protects and, protect and promotes dignity and basic freedoms and rights 
for every citizen. A Uganda that puts interests of the people, the citizens, at the forefront of public policy. The alternative budget priorities presented today recognize the plight of the ordinary Ugandan, whom the leaders derive their mandate from, and also pay for what we intend to do in order to make Uganda a country that works for every Ugandan. Ladies and gentlemen, Ugandans deserve better health care, they deserve better education, and they deserve better infrastructure in order for them to live their full potential and benefit and enjoy all their fundamental rights. Because education is essential for producing skilled workers, a workforce that will transform communities, it's therefore important that our children study subjects and courses that are relevant to their passion and natural abilities. We cannot achieve without changing, we can't achieve this without changing or in fact overhauling our entire education system and realigning our education institutions. Considering that 75% of Uganda's disease burden is preventable, then we must make our priority to invest in disease prevention rather than disease cure. This should be done in a skilled and professional health workers through a fair recruitment process and go ahead to remunerate them fairly and on time. We must think about our creative area, think about our creatives, provide conditions that don't only protect their intellectual property, but also create conditions that help them to live to their full potential about the creatives that will go on and on and on with the race, I guess, Dr. Hilderman and uh, others who are creatives and within our leadership will elucidate on that. However, ladies and gentlemen, as attractive as all these alternative policies might be, it is actually impossible to achieve them if the leaders in charge of our national resources cannot rise about their petty selfishness. We must resist, we must reject, in fact, we must eject all forms of corruption in public administration. Otherwise, all this will be going to the West. Our sources will continue sinking down the long drain of personal grief at the expense of our collective well-being and at the lives of our people, our children, and our children's children. As a national unity platform, we shall continue to take decisive action in that regard. Many good proposals have been presented in terms of policy alternatives, in terms of laws, by ourselves and other leaders. But let us be honest, no matter how good our thoughts are, no matter how beautiful our proposals are, they shall never see the light of the day for as long as dictator Museveni is still in charge of this country. That is my firm belief. Yes, we must continue telling Ghana the truth as it is instead of, you know, misleading them with eloquent speeches. We must paint to them a picture of the problem and you need to go ahead and point at where the problem is. The man who has ruled our country for almost 40 years now is not just a political opponent to us, no. He is the embodiment of Uganda's problem. He is the living testament of corruption. He is the testament of oppression. He is the embodiment of the abuse of all democratic principles. In a nutshell, he is the roadblock, he is the standing block between Uganda and its progress. So let us face the reality and deal with the reality as it is. It's until you diagnose the problem that you'll be able to. I mean, he and his cronies live in extreme luxury while our hospitals are sick and our schools are rotting away. 
Yes, we have alternative policies. Yes, we have brilliant minds here in Parliament. You know, wonderful at the comments, wonderful at debating and all that. But we shall debate, we shall propose, and we shall articulate issues. But let me be clear to you once again, my brothers and sisters, that no matter how good our alternatives are, no matter how well intentioned you our MPs are, it won't make any difference for as long as we don't have any power to implement those good ideas. We must get used to that part and deal with that part exactly the way it is. I mean, we can draft the most comprehensive budgets, we can allocate funds meticulously, we can strategize endlessly, but as long as the seven remains at the helm, the efforts will all be like rearranging cups on the following table. We must channel all our energy, we must channel all our passion and all our abilities and all our determination towards one single mission, removing the dictator and reorganizing the country as the citizens of Uganda. That is the only way this is going to be possible. So I continue to encourage all of us here present and those watching us outside that we must do what we must do. You cannot just take a step unless you unlock your feet. So for now, what we have as a great resource is our collective determination and collective will to have a free country and after having that then we shall go ahead to build a Uganda where all Ugandans are equal regardless of their ethnicity, regardless of where they come from, regardless of religion, tribe or social class. We shall go ahead to build a Uganda where leaders lead with integrity, where leaders are true servants and citizens are the true masters of their destiny. So let us use this resource that we have to put an end to this dictatorship. Let us use this resource to change this country once and for all. I thank you for listening to me for God and my country. Thank you, Mr. President, for that very elaborate speech. We also thank the leader of opposition for his speech to us all. We believe we have taken in what we have been told. Now, allow me, honorable members, to invite Coach Bob to take us through a small session of you know, stretching so we can move forward. Thank you so much. <laughs> Now it is our responsibility to hand here. My video shot on the All of us can do it. Oh, now we are here. Just for instructions. I'll be counting one. But keep the smiles. His Excellency Robert Chagrani sent me, the 10th President of the Republic of Uganda, has just addressed the nation about the, the alternative budget of the Office of the Leader of Opposition. The right honorable General Senior has welcomed the President in the House as they are introducing their budget to the nation. As you've heard, the President has challenged them that even if they speak a lot of English, even if they have good alternative policies without changing the government, they are doing nothing. So he has advised them to focus on the main issue of changing the leadership from the top office, that is the office of the President, and he has encouraged them to continue spreading the gospel of change. He has advised one, two, the members three. of parliament one, two, three. to focus one, two, on three. teaching the nation how to focus, how to change. That's how the president has 
summarized his speech. He has challenged them on who to work on these issues. Other than that, they are facing the big, big challenge. The president, he has just returned from the Netherlands. He returned tonight, but he could not miss the session of talking to the members of parliament. Out of over, Don't cheat yourself down. Out of over Three, the MPs from the opposition, four, you can five, check the numbers and you see six, how many are around. Seven, he has eight, them to continue nine, spreading. Ten, one one half half and turn around your bodies like this. On behalf of Keto TV members, one, two, on behalf of Keto TV staff, I'm not saying this is a journal to have a new member at the time. One, two, three. I'm not going to have a new member at the time. One, two, three. President party was a margin of back up with a challenge. One, two, three. 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 One, Ukumbi ndani ya kufuatia mbizi, ukwa wa guru, ukole mbirua, kuna maji yewe, hutoa sivu na ngati, chizibu chipanga, chizibu chini na mara kuchuka, iguanga ya kuwari ya yagara. Isa weno, abaka ba parliamenti bete katikira, ukusomirua budget, yeye ni fina, ebi dikoondo, mani government, kuna wasamuzi mwa na yeye minister of finance, ida, ida kuwa haba somera mu, bichi yasubiro kula, mwenye mukuru, atunoli dogo dogo mbizi. Ocha sasa ni sisi mkuu ya ya government sasa na wapa parliament sasa na wapa kwenye zaidi ya ulso president wote yawa diwa sisi na wapa sasa kula bantu kuchemu kuchita kula bantu kuchemu tu kile sisi the Lord will see of the president but as we continue. Thank you so much, Mr. President. Thank you so much. Ah, we're going to talk. 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 We're going to tal
watu ni afya pali ameweka tena kwa juu ya sanyo ni neti ni na jambo zina yuko kuhu kuhu ni budget ya fano itali ya itali ni nini yuko na yeye tenge foka singa kubindu hivi ambavantu gekubiri anomala mwa ugu stula idem idemberi abantu idemberi abantu sipo ya galabu ya gazi na ino ku enjoy ngo boku mumiwa boku ya gadi rambi intu hivyo hivyo sani boku ya gadi rambu mateka ni ukusingi la dalu baka bwange wakati mukubeba za uloku vayo ni budget ya ni nungi nevi roze vi nungi mba juki zaba kulembe zeba fe nti nevi roze vi nungi tu jana vyo biba denga vile itewa na ye chizibu chetu ina nevi roze viko makule itewa chizibu hsinge cha Uganda ye nache malira yowe ni mseveni nga ye senteze guanga zona zona azima lira mkwe kumira mbu yinza kuguli laba kulembeze wa mwetorode na kunyikiriza wa antu so echizibu chetu nino kusoko kujao ye nache malira mseveni then tuberene dembe ezivisa sanya senteza Uganda si mkwe jarabia na imu kutereze vyo ebisano kutasa wa antu ungama somero ungama lwa liru nebi laifana na webi chetu chicho yongera kusonga izigena maso batu uli ya mparlamenti atari songa za komisiona wa mtu usewa Well, sagala insonge no nene jiri di singa kumuntu omu Insonga jemba desikonye kwe insonga yenguzi Ekute ejembe Ni wankubade omu kufe na hii ya sanga monsonge yu Na ye abamu kulira viva singo kulia nguzi Wakugeza speaker wa fe wano Speaker wa parliament ya Uganda Ye nachi nku mkulia nguzi Ere cho cheta goku ugeru wako Nsi na ichimanya Nensi ne mukolinga out kubanga sente izono ne bwa parliament eno sobolo kuchusobola mbwa abantu bonji nyo so obuli bwenguzi ye kansa ayono nye Uganda kati chafuka institutiono enguzi yafuka ngeri ya kwe kumira mbuyinza na ngeri ya kukakanya abavuganya government so enguzi nge kulemberwa ni tamongo speaker wa wano no munga mulimu sibo kabo kaba enali menga mulimu na abafe kizibu nyo era na chotu ino kirwanyisa ate tujja kirwanyisa fenga nup tujja kukola kukozi sebi kolwa sibi gambo wetu ino buyinza wona okulwanyisa enguzi na etu agala na buli kitongo le cha government chikoso buyinza obo okulwanyisa enguzi kuba enguzi yesizigiza yugane mabiga kasana kando muchimena cha momo mujude kanjite obutalo talo obintalo talo techeko senga de mino kutamza wendi moja mwe otanti ensonga yo butalo talo mwe banama ulire mwe abajitekawo tewali lutalo rona rona okole kango ngama nti okole kitufu luba lutalo Ukole chitufu weduwa lutalo, then tuli murutalo. Ila tu ino kubela murutalo. Gatulu wa njise nguzi, gatulu wa njiso buli yake, 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 gatulu wa njiso buli yake. So, si... Mchivina chafe, nzendo uza mchivina chafe Tuwa ndiba denga echo ukula bilako Buli mtu Kaberenga speaker wa pari ya meti ya kute Ya kute ya lide nguzi Kaberenga minister Na haka ngavurua Nga bachino kubeda Fenga NUP Tuba wacha ukula bilako Tuli option Era mu Uganda mpia Betu bikola Betu jo bikola Nga tumazo kukuma na chema lila Kuchime yogera kubigambo ya Kona levo mtu ukame ya gaba Tiwa under siege Sagala nyo kukendeza kukogera kwa nge kukukakanya ate kusa kuwa memba bange bengu kule mbela mchivina njagala nyonjo gere kusonga ezi gasa iguanga liona kati budget yenu si ya NUP yoka wabula reflectinga hifana ncha opposition yona so sagala nsonga za NUP ya tenzi ingi zembibine bilara njagala nyonjo gere kuchintu echi gasa iguanga liona liona si chivina choka nga NUP Chana kunyo okubela monsi inga tulo oza Nti waba obu menyi wa mateka o ina kutesa na menya mateka Waba obu menyi wa mateka Nga wali wo evidence Obu ya obu Obu julizi Obu mudu mika Deni amateka kakore Bumunga amanti te Omutu waba menye teka Batesa ganye na ye Deni tuje wa mateka Biberibi ya kutesa ganye Baganda bafe abasi wa makomeda te baina musango Noluwe nsonge yu Baina okuyimburua embagira o Awatari kakwa kulizo Kupati baina musango Bababa baina musango Baletewe mkoti Bavunaaniwe Umusango gubake muvi Obaba kusinge Bejerele So si kutesa ganye na bo Iye nkola ya chieke rate, tu kilizi ganyana yo, tu kilizi ganyana mufuga, ya mateka, elabo tu natuwa lugu inza, ya mufuga, ya tujo kutambuli ya. It is unfortunate that we live in a country where the leadership thinks, or the rulership thinks that 
when somebody commits a crime, you have to negotiate. If somebody commits a crime, then let the evidence be presented, let them be presented in a competent court, and let them be either convicted or acquitted. We are not going to negotiate our rights. We believe in the rule of law. If there is the rule of law in Uganda, let it work. If the courts function in Uganda, let them work. Our brothers and sisters who are in prison for the longest time, the political prisoners, are innocent and we continue to demand their unconditional release. We are not going to negotiate because if you ask us to negotiate, what do you want to us to give in exchange for our freedom? Dembe ya ba te dembe ya ba edio si be te gefu diwa yo ne ba na te ba ba jaku si galanga ba ni dembe ya ba so si ya kute sako ne ya ba eba ange kuba constitution ni garanti. How far have you gone with that with the issue of commissioner matters and all? Well, everything we do, we do it in the open. We are transparent political party. And what happened was in public. The information came from the public domain, and we dealt with it as our moral commit. By the speaker responded. What, what's your take on the speaker's letter? The speaker is a criminal herself. The speaker is a criminal, so we don't really have time to exchange with criminals. Thank you very much. At this moment, at this moment, internal conflicts has infiltrated your party. Will this affect the potential alternative response? The so called internal conflicts are a creation of the media. As you have seen, so many TVs have been on o, 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 out you know on rampage trying to create a non-existent uh impression that we have conflicts no they're not conflicts the only conflict we have is with criminality is with corruption and we deal with corruption uh, as people that know that corruption is a cancer that has bedeviled our country thank you maybe lastly somebody on poker says you are under siege and doesn't know how to help you what's your take on this statement well, we major on majors and minor on minors. Thank you. Kale, my brother, no, and those are the same number of the day. I did again so called President Ajuns, Severon, Boryanga, and Jagad Day. So the singa ye wala nyo kubela muntalo, neva na maule, iba giza ako chite kao, ila unse, wewa di wakala. Aba gambi, taina vude, taina vude, mungila kumundu, we major, on majors and minors and minors. His Excellency the Republic of Uganda. Thank <laughs> you.